Today, I want to talk about the $80 trillion, yes, trillion with a T, of illegally hidden swaps that have just been revealed, and how these swaps pose a massive risk to financial stability during the current crash. If these hidden short swaps turn toxic, which they already have, it's likely to cause a massive all-out crash, a giant wave of liquidations, and the AMC squeeze. So stay tuned, and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, Gold Telegraph tweeted saying, breaking news, the Bank for International Settlements is warning that pension funds and other non-bank financial firms now have more than $80 trillion of hidden off-balance sheet dollar debt in the form of swaps. The Bank for International Settlement is saying this hidden off-balance sheet debt is now sitting at $80 trillion, and it creates a blind spot for those regulators that they didn't know about until now. Its main warning concerned what it described as the swap debt blind spot that risked leaving policymakers in a fog. It says the $80 trillion plus hidden debt estimate exceeds the stock of dollar, treasury bills, repo, and commercial paper combined. And as Jan Jack tweeted, he said that's the dark room in which unsettled synthetic shares and FTDs in AMC and GameStop and other such assets are packaged into swaps as liabilities to hide them away from the public and the regulators. He said $80 trillion of debts held by banks, brokers, hedge funds, and other financial firms. Now, I do think it's important to make it clear that it's not $80 trillion exactly of AMC synthetic shares. That would obviously mean there's one or two trillion synthetic shares, which I don't think is the case. However, I do think, say, the float is sold 10 times over, which is 5 billion synthetic shares, at a rate of $40 per share, is around $200 billion of AMC synthetics. But on top of that 200 billion in AMC synthetics, you've got another 200 billion in GameStop synthetics, and many, many more billions in other synthetic shares created across the entire market. Now you've also got other forms of swaps like interest rate swaps and FX swaps as well, and the total of all of these swaps is $80 trillion. A large portion of this $80 trillion is going to be short swaps on equities or short swaps on stocks, but don't forget there's also other kind of swaps like FX and interest rate swaps as well. But Jan Jack is absolutely correct in saying this $80 trillion is the total value of AMC FTDs and AMC total return swaps and other total return swaps and FTDs that have been hidden. Now these hidden swaps haven't disappeared completely, they are still there and these hedge funds still have to meet their margin requirements. They haven't disappeared, they're just simply hidden from the public view. And as Hang Loose tweeted, he said the big news of today is the BIS is reporting $80 trillion in debt being hidden in off-balance data. And he said the same BIS will be implementing its next round of Basel III capital requirements on the 1st of January 2023. He said in September of 2022 we saw phase 6 coming into effect on derivatives trading, but that's smaller potatoes. And he said now we're moving towards the head honcho final boss of leverage and capital requirements on global systemically important banks, Basel III and Basel IV. You may remember this screenshot that says on the 1st of January 2023, it says regulatory initial margin requirements apply under US prudential regulations for covered swap entities with material swaps exposure exceeding $8 billion. This is those Basel III and Basel IV requirements, not just for entities with $8 billion in normal long or short positions or $8 billion in derivatives positions, but $8 billion in swap positions as well. And on top of that, you may also remember that on December 5th, there's the expiration of extension of CFTC no action relief to entities submitting swaps for clearing by derivatives clearing organizations, DCOs, operating under CFTC exemptive orders or CFTC staff no action reliefs. And also now that we know that Moomoo does not facilitate payment for order flow, Moomoo is currently having their biggest ever giveaway for the Christmas season. Moomoo is currently giving away 20 free stocks worth up to $2,000 each, a whopping total of up to $40,000 plus a chance to win $60,000 in their holiday magic sweepstakes. So obviously be sure to sign up to Moomoo right now using the link in the description below. Now Bigums has done a great job explaining what that actually means. He said, let me explain this. When the contracts that are currently grandfathered in actually expire, aka those call and those options and those married and divorced puts actually expire, it means a new contract will be made with an actual deposit. But on top of that, a third party will watch the agreement and the deposit basically meaning there's no more married and divorced puts, or specifically, these married and divorced puts are now much harder to hide. And he said this means these $90 trillion of hidden swaps become non-hidden. 
Now, I don't necessarily want to say they become non-hidden and all disappear and get closed out of all at once. I think it just means they become much, much harder to hide. It basically means they now have to meet these new capital requirement regulations under CFTC rules, unless they can somehow bribe the CFTC and keep it hidden. So basically, it does make it much harder to hide. It doesn't guarantee they have to be closed out and the squeeze will guaranteed happen on the 1st of January 2023. It just makes these positions significantly harder to hide and they'll have to figure out something new or close out and cause the squeeze. And on top of that, Eric Cuttle has found something very, very interesting. This screenshot says, furthermore, preferred stocks are so thinly traded and also lack liquidity, which makes them a poor target or poor candidates for shorting. It says the initial difficulty is being able to borrow available shares of preferred stocks, just like Ape, that traders want to sell short. So even though it makes no sense for these hedge funds to short preferred stocks like Ape due to the thinly traded nature of them, they've somehow still made Ape the most shorted stock in the entire market. This is obviously that Yahoo table of the most shorted stocks in the entire market where Ape ranks number one, even though it supposedly makes zero sense to short preferred stocks. Not only is Ape the most heavily shorted stock, they also racked up a whopping 43 million FTDs on the first day of release and have consistently racked up millions of FTDs every single day. But as Cornelius tweeted, he said they don't short it because it makes sense. They don't short it because they want to. They short it because they have to. He said they can't let the ape price come up or they all have to close out of all of their short positions. He said when ape runs, AMC, GameStop and all of the other meme stocks will run as well. And they'll have to start closing short positions across the board basically saying these shorts aren't pushing the price of ape down because they want to or because it makes sense they're pushing the price down because they have to and if they don't it will cause the squeeze and it will liquidate all of these short funds and that is why they're basically trying to get ape delisted as fast as they possibly can before these new margin requirements for swap positions are introduced on top of that, on the other side of the fence, Caroline, Sam Bankman-Fried's left-hand woman and the CEO of Amada Research is reportedly in New York in America right now. And as Wall Street Silver tweeted, she was in Hong Kong when this all began. And therefore, the only reason to come back to the US and risk arrest is because she likely already has an immunity deal to testify against Sam Bankman-Fried. It's likely these regulators and law enforcement are giving the best deal to whoever is first to spill the beans. This photo was taken of Caroline in a coffee shop in New York City only a few days ago. Now, obviously, if Caroline snitches on Sam, Sam will be extradited back to the US and Sam will likely end up snitching on all of these big hedge funds that paid him off. A few days ago, Sam bankman fried tweeted saying Maxine Waters and the House Committee on Financial Services. Once I've finished learning and reviewing what happened, I would feel like it's my duty to appear before the committee and explain. He said, I'm not sure that will happen by the 13th, but when it does, I will testify. Now, this is a classic scammer trick of explaining he's trying to finish learning and when he does, he will testify. But if Caroline obviously snitches on him, he will be forced to testify and snitch and rat out all of these big hedge funds and everybody on Wall Street. And as Rocket Astronaut tweeted, he said this guy messed up and he's about to expose a whole lot of corruption. They are screwed. He said they never saw that coming and they swear this guy is going to be flying to the USA for a hearing. Now, obviously, when these new capital requirements do kick in and when these hedge funds are forced to close out of their short positions or find a more creative way to kick the can as they won't be able to do it through total return swaps, it will cause a further crash in the market. On top of that, I am certain the bottom of the market has not yet been seen. As unusual, Wells tweet is saying the S&P 500 hasn't bottomed before a recession session has ended since World War II. At the moment, the US isn't yet admitting to a recession. The UK and the rest of Europe is admitting that we are already in a recession. Therefore, while the market is continuing to fall, the market won't bottom out until the recession is finished. Therefore, it's likely we still have a lot further to go in the S&P 500. It's likely going to fall below 300 points, potentially even lower, and potentially below those 2020 lows. And obviously, when the S&P 500 falls another 10 or 20 percent, that will cause many of these hedge funds to fail these new increased margin requirements. And as I've said, when that happens, they will be forced to sell off their stocks and they will be forced to close out of their short positions. 
Now you may say, Tom, you've been saying this for ages. Why hasn't the market crashed yet? And why haven't these hedge funds yet been forced to close? Well, obviously, as you saw from Michael Burry in the big short, it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't take two or three days. This stuff obviously takes some time. As Michael Burry said, he may have been early, but he wasn't wrong. And therefore, I know that right now we are not wrong because the S&P 500 has never bottomed before a recession since World War II. Therefore, the market clearly still has further to fall. There is clearly going to be more hedge funds being liquidated, and there is clearly going to be more hedge funds that are forced to close out of their shorts. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.